please give a round of applause to our first speaker for the evening. Uh, you might have heard her every day. Uh, Frida Liu! <laughs> Okay, so uh, what I want to share with you is actually, you know, a lot of times uh, people do come on air and what actually gets them on air. And, uh, you know, we re uh, what I've been really impressive, anyone here doesn't, okay, have not heard of BFM? Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> right, okay, so anyway, uh, you know, with BFM, when we first started, we were like, you know, where can we find content? You know, we were very worried about that, you know, but... It's really nice to know that Malaysia has a lot of content and has a lot of talent. Of course, you know, we, we do people interview people overseas as well. Um, and trying to get that story, and I think we've, we've got to move up to a, a new level as well and try to get that attention. Um, because as you're, if you're all been to BFM, it's not just that one-off interview. We're moving with technology, you know, you've got your podcast and all that. I think that's one of the appeal of uh, BFM. So, a um, little bit of history ab about me. Uh, I used to work... Uh, on the uh, in, in the dark side, I was on the dark side. I was in public relations before, uh, so you know. And all the journalists that I know have now gone to the dark side. Stefan, um, you know. So it was, it's a good it's a good perspective because I've been on the other side and I know what they're trying to say. The public relations people, what they're trying to say, trying to get where they work with with their clients, they try to get their story across. But also, and I, having been on the side, try to fit them in the middle ground. But we also know that look. We're not stupid. We know that it's being sold. I mean, I've had to sometimes bite the bullet and just sort of just go with it because I feel I feel sorry for some because we do have guests coming on. They don't speak well or, or don't speak well in the sense not uh, not language. Um, how do I say this? Like we, today we had this guy from Turkey, right? And he couldn't speak very well, right? So I mean, it was more that. So I felt like I need to help him with that process. But you know, you're not going to get a lot of these chances. So. Um, what I wanted to share with you is that there are a lot of opportunities where you can come and use PR, I've got 15 minutes, and uh, how you can actually just sell yourself, really sell yourself. And there are many aspects of it. Sometimes when we get these invitations, we get these people to come in to be interviewed and they give me this one angle and like, okay, what's in it for me? What's in it for the listener? You, when you come in, what's the story at the end of the day? It's a great product for you, right? It's a great product, you know, but where's, what's, what's the point, right? And you just have to sort of look at it and how you can slice it because the story can go in many ways, in many angles. And I'll just share with you an example. I actually did this similar presentation to a, a bunch of female entrepreneurs and how they actually, and it was actually it was talking around cooking. But anyway, same from that. Okay. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like when you're talking about uh, PR, it re the, you've seen this before, what, how, when, you know, why. But first, who are you trying to reach out to? Who's your audience at the end of the day? You know, when you come into, just a very simple example, and I don't know why people forget to do this. Like when you, say you want to pitch a story to the star, okay? You want to pitch a story to the star, and you say, I want to put a story. Do you all think, um, same concept, you know? The, is it the general page? Is this the business page? Is that the, is it the uh, lifestyle pages, right? So it's a very simple, and your story changes depending on who you're trying to angle it to. So sometimes we get these email that just sort of like, to us and we don't know who you're trying to target and sometimes I have to put on a PR for that. Huh, I can see the angle beyond that, right? So if you can make it easier for us and do a bit of research as well on who you're trying to do, segment, you know, I mean, go, it, everything is online. You know, I was in the industry before the internet, okay? And when you have to do your research, yes, you have to do your research. And now it's, it just amazes me with the kind of information that you have that a lot of people are not doing their homework. And I'm not you know, but just do a bit of homework. Everything is online. You can find out about anybody online, yeah? yeah. All right. Um, no, so when you think about um, trying to reach out as well, stop and think, you know, if your brand was a person, um, if your company was a person, right, it would have personality. If, what would the personality be, right? What would the values be? What would the culture be? And it's very important because when you talk about your personality, um, you, 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 you wear different hats, but your values stay the same. Your personality stays the same. You know, when I talk to someone who's, you know, in a female magazine or whatever, then I put on, you know, the female hat or the mother hat or whatever, I'm still 
who I am, right? So when you think about the different uh, areas that you want to reach out to, the different publications or different uh, web pa or websites or papers you want to get out to, understand that you can wear different hats and there are different ways to slice the story, whatever the story may be. Um, you know, so look at that and, you know, you may be all these things, but your personality stays the same, your values stay the same. And you've seen, you know, like my, my, my boss, uh, Malik, he's appeared on just about everything, but you hear pretty much the same story, you know, the guy, you know, well, he always goes, gets out into the business side of things anyway, but he, re he says that story and um, you, you know who it is. They, there's, he doesn't have much of a personal life, so whenever they try to do a personality story, there isn't much. <laughs> I, you know, we laugh about it, we joke about it. He doesn't go play golf, he doesn't have that kind of... So, he's, so his life is his job. So, but you, you, I think if you've read about him, that really is who he is, and he tells you how the company is doing and how, or how well the company is doing. So he's very upfront, and I think that's what we resonate as well. So again, sometimes you've seen this before, but just again, how do you tell the story? What's in it that for them, not you? So when you come into... Uh, being interviewed, you know, again, it's not about you, when it's not about, but who, how will your target audience at the end realize that, right? Uh, features versus benefits, we know about that, you know, so I have, um, um, you know, this great, wonderful medication, okay, better, it's, it's better to hear it cures cancer, right? Then you'll pay attention, yeah, great, wonderful medication, but if it cures cancer, then you'll sit up, right? So same thing when you try to sell it across, right? So, um, uh, be an information provider, not an information pusher, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit. Okay, um, have who has uh, come on radio? I know there's a few of you that I've met. Uh, yeah, okay, come on radio. Okay, so you. Yeah. Okay, now um, either you've been invited or you've actually pitched your story across, and, and that's the best way to go. Or I mean, just just spoken to media. Who has just spoken to media generally? Yeah, I think the magazines would have you. Okay. Um, the whole process again, pinpoint the meat, you know, media that your potential client uh, reads, watches, or hears. And I think one of the appeal that people like to get on BFM is because it's available on podcasts and you can start spreading it to your friends. So you feel that that works. So analyze your target media. That's very important. So you may not be a large publication, because I don't know who reads the star nowadays, not in the physical. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you again. Um, so create your pitch, and I want to talk about that. And prepare supporting points, pitch points, yeah? And, uh, and even prepare more than one story and angle to it. Because there really is, you know, when you talk about I'm just a restaurant, there's so many ways of, you know, slicing that, you know, to skin the cat. There are many ways of skinning the cat with that story and how it can appeal to different uh, media out there, yeah? Okay. What makes a story, okay, is if it uh, involves well-known people, um, maybe we don't get a lot of that, but hey, you know, uh, that imp impact uh, explains how many people are affected by the news. When you start thinking, okay, what's the promise? What is the surprise? Uh, sometimes we've got, you know, uh, timeliness, so if it's very current, you know, so every day, you know, if you listen to our show as well, in the morning, in the morning show, we have current affairs, so what's, what's current right now, you know? Erika Badu, you know? Uh, something new, okay? Uh, trends, we like talking about trend surveys, you know, we love talking about that, something useful, okay? Uh, answers like, how will it affect my life? question and also sometimes involves subject matter experts in the industry you know this guy is coming to town he's you know uh, the best thing since sliced bread whatever so you, you think about that uh, rather than you know we've got um, and, and I know like with a lot of techies we've got great things webcam you know whatever you know so but we, we have had them on again and you know that that really appeals to that tech the tech group people yeah let me know about the finish so also I, I sometimes Find a good time to call, right? Um, I just want to go through this very quickly. Uh, this is more the print, print kind of side of things, you know, when you have make sure that you call at a certain time, not so much with the radio. Uh, have your pitch. Why do you need to? Why do you? Why do I deserve to be interviewed? And you know, and just explain to them a little bit and follow through. And if the person says, "Look, I've got no time to chat right now," follow up with an email. Simple things, right? Simple things, but don't be too pushy. Okay. A written pitch, again, that's good. Yeah? And simple, you know, when you write an email to us, the, it should capture my attention, it should capture our attention, you know, the screen, how big, you know, so it should capture attention in the screen because people don't like to scroll down. You know that, yeah? Um, so, okay, put that, these are all very, you know, simple things you've heard, okay? Um, provoke, okay, a written pitch, you gotta provoke, you know, whether the title, the heading, you know, um, Get me to read, want to read you in the, in the headlines. Okay? Get me in the subject matter. Uh, 
right? And uh, you know, that could be the intriguing question or startling statistic, you know, and don't oversell also if you can't deliver that. And one of the things is that um, when you try and come on, a lot of times sometimes we have guests coming on and they think it's a brochure, right? It's not a brochure, right? And it is, it's, it's, that's a different medium altogether. So some, when you've got great product, great product, great product, I always have to say, well, so what's in it for the audience? So you, when you put on that pitch, you say, why listeners of your show would benefit because, you know, you think of a better word like that, you know, you, you but think of that, yeah? Okay, got a picture, okay. Research kind of stories are okay. So, yeah, you know one of the things that if you if you've listened to my show, um, so my show is actually targeted at SMEs and business owners, right? Uh, I've got four segments to my show, and I have the I have pitches that they don't. It's just you. They don't even send to the right person, the right uh, whatever, and like we have to weave through. You know, we have to sift through it, and sometimes you just think. It's all available online. And when I look at something and I'm just thinking, how much effort did you put into this? And it makes me think, how much effort did you put into your product? Because it's that finish, it's that the final product. You know, it's that final, you know, if you, have you covered it all? And it may not be the case because you're not aware of it, but that's the impression, you know, uh, I get. And maybe that's because I put on the, the PR hat sometimes and, you know, like, I wouldn't, want, I, I wouldn't want to pitch this to a journalist if it's not, everything is not in place, yeah? Okay. Da, da, da. okay, okay, right, so, you know, whatever stuff, information, uh, and, um, and give them background information that helps, uh, brochure, if it's a newspaper, brochure, news release, photo, right, that's for, for newspapers, but also what's happening with, uh, uh, with BFM, we're trying to get into video, um, and also with the podcast, we try to attach presentations to it, if you've got something like that, so that comes in handy, so it's not just a straight off right now, but so when someone goes into that podcast, they can actually see all the attached information with it. So we're moving in that direction. So, you know, things are changing. Um, so do your research. What, what's possible? Okay, stories fit for print. Um, just a couple of tips on print. Okay, and I'll, I'll spend more time on radio since I've been there. You know, trend or in-depth stories, you can, you know, do that. Uh, local or national impact of readers, local ed- anecdotes, you know, fight papers, studies and reports. These are st- st- stories fit for print. Um, because you've got more space, right? And the way um, it's written is also different, right? Because people read differently as when, when they're spoken to, okay? Again, print, again, not hard and fast rules. We do appreciate all this as well, um, you know, all the information, background information. Sometimes, no, but the more information we have, the more that we can work on, the more we can angle with. Okay, you want this? Okay, why not? Okay, make sure. Again, it's newsworthy, catchy headline, okay? Mm, tell the audience information there for them, why they should continue to read it. Okay, how's, how are people going to relate to this and will they be able to connect? Maybe what you all want to do is sometimes just run it by a friend, right? Would you want to read it? You know, if you don't have the benefit of a, a PR consultant to help you, run it by a friend, you know? And I'm sure your friend will be very honest about how they feel, okay? Um, Ex- avoid excessive use of uh, adjectives, right? It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, deal with the facts, okay? Contact information, blah, blah, blah. That's for a news release, right? So, spell check and grammar check, very important. That annoys me. That really annoys me. You know? I mean, I think that's, you have all the tools, okay? So you can't, you gotta get it right. And nothing that annoys me is actually people getting my name wrong, but I just let it be. But it's just, that's just, maybe it's personal, but to me it's like, if you can't get my name right, I'm just wondering how much, how thorough you've gone through it. And I don't have a long name. It's only five letters to it. You know, so it's like, you know, just, it helped. You know, because they'll send this email to me, Frida at EFM.my, F-R-E-D-A, right? And then they'll say, Dear Frida, F-R-I-E-D-A. Okay, so, okay, that's pet peeve, pet peeve, pet peeve. So, uh, stories for radio, okay? Uh, timely, newsworthy, or trend stories. I love talking to the tech guys, you know, so they're very energy. Sometimes you have to take them back to earth, you know? Uh, but you know, I get, I do, I slow, I'm slowly getting a bit geeky when I talk to them. But you know, um, when you get on radio as well, you know, find someone that's credible, energetic, and articulate. It is important. I do believe content is important, but understand that that comes across on radio. And um, think of great sound bites. You know, we've had great sound bites. Uh, what was this guy? And we use the promo says, stop before you stumble into stupidity. And I thought, wow, what a great, you know, sound bites, you know, but maybe not in this context. But 
it, it is important because people will switch off. If you don't grab someone's attention with, within, I think, five seconds, you would really lose them on radio. But understand that with radio, if you have, I feel, if you have mastered radio, TV will be a piece of cake. If you can tell the story with, ana with, with, with analogies, okay, uh, with, uh, with stories, right, then people can picture it. Coming on TV with all the added visuals is a bonus. So if you can master radio, right, um, it's the theater of the mind. I feel that, right? Um, so again, these are things we tell them, switch off everything, you know. Uh, we appreciate suggested questions. Okay, we do appreciate suggested questions. If you're looking at an angle, we do. But um, don't tell us what we need to ask. Okay, I'm gonna have. I don't know if I've got time to go there, but don't don't tell us what to ask, what not to ask. Okay, it is not an advertisement. Okay, it's not an advertisement. I had someone today. Okay, I'll tell you what I said. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, speak normally. Yeah, speak normally. We don't have to put any accents unless you are really from overseas, right? And enunciate properly. And I always teach people that when you come on, on radio, it, it is daunting if you haven't been on radio for the first time or, or anything of that sort. There's this big mic in your face. Um, and to calm your nerves, just speak as lowly, as in the low voice as possible, natural low voice. So that when you get excited, it's not so obvious, you know? So just naturally, right? Um, um, avoid filler words. <laughs> and what we'll be kind to at the end is like, where can people get more information? We'll, we'll be kind enough to do that. So don't sound too salesy. I get, you know, people get turned off. You know, you know, you get turned off when you hear something that's too salesy as well. So we do appreciate suggested questions. So today, what happened was, I think we're running out of time, okay. Uh, no? Okay. Okay. Um, today we had this guy who, uh, they, they, they are all these, they organize events and all that, right? So this, they're trying to sell their seminar courses and everything. It was a very interesting topic. So we wanted to interview the speaker and, um, and so, and of course this, the sales team has also tried to get them to advertise and they've said no, but we feel that, and we're very particular and I, about unlike certain publications, uh, we're very particular that advertising and editorial are separate, right? So that it remains objective, right? So if you advertise, great, you know, if you, so we, we decided to interview this story anyway, it was a pre-recorded, and their seminar is happening next Monday. And so the person says, um, when is it coming out? And then the person replies, that we'll, we'll have to discuss this with the editorial when it's coming out. Well, our event is happening on March 5th. Get it out, ASAP. <laughs> so I said, here is my suggested reply. I said, you know, um, the advertising and the auditorial team work separately. Uh, whether we air it, if we air it, um, <laughs> whether we air it, if we air it, or whatever, is at the sole discretion of the editorial team. I'm sure you appreciate that BFM listeners are a discerning lot. If you would like to advertise, please call so and so. So uh, sometimes people think. We're a brochure and we're, you know, so if it's a great story, it's a great story. And we will, as much as, we're not, you know, being stick in the mud. So if we can accommodate, sure, you know what I mean? We're, we're, we're Malaysians that way. But, you know, we just, you appreciate it, right? You appreciate why, you know, why people listen to BFM. Because we're objective. We do, you know, um, as much as possible, right? I mean, that's all the stories that have gone. We've gotten in trouble a lot as well, so you know we're doing the right thing. Okay, uh, stories fit for TV. I used to do TV as well, but that was, I was reading propaganda and spouting propaganda and that's why I left. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was, it was, uh, you know, after a while, it just, after a long while, it gets to you. Um, so, um, I was very patient. So, again, same rules, okay, and uh, you know any visuals that you have. But again, you know we're moving in that direction. Uh, BFM, you know we're trying to move there because it's all about. We may talk about contents, both visual and, and audio, right now. Okay, what to do with a TV? Uh, do not wear white or chrome key blue set. Make sure you don't blend with the set. <laughs> you know. Uh, and, you know there, there are, the, what we call it? What's that thing? Uh? I can't remember. What it's called right. Green, green, green. Yeah, so you don't don't wear anything of that color. The floating head. Uh, <laughs> no contrasting patterns or shiny fabric, something that jangles, please. There's one on radio, I uh, can hear that as well. Uh, control, we, we try to control both body movement, what I see. Do some breathing exercises so I can actually help you just calm down, have a cigarette. You know? <laughs> okay, you did again, uh, did I just say have a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that helps. Uh, connecting online, and I think this is all your thing here, you know. Um, these are the Places that you also go out. Facebook has been excellent, right? It really 
has been great. Uh, tweeting, you know, find out what's trending, you know, share links, microblogs, this part I think you all know better than me. Uh, but bloggers, that's very important as well, right? You, who you can work with. Um, I remember last year I went to, and how, how the landscape has changed, and sometimes I think because there's tougher rules, it's good. Uh, last year I was, uh, uh, went with Carlsberg to, to Nepal. And Malaysia, we were the only uh, media that went. We, it was a safe Mount Everest campaign where we did a cleaning campaign. And in Singapore, because you're not allowed to advertise, they brought in uh, two bloggers, okay? And these bloggers were fitness bloggers, so they blogged about it. So it's, you know, it's, it's a different way of reaching out to people right now. So, you know, there are, if you can connect with the right bloggers, you know, if you have a restaurant, who are these food reviewers? And there are all these bloggers out there. I mean, there is what, um, uh, bread, there's, you know, like we, I interviewed this person who was, uh, who makes breads and they're into organic, you know, bread and all that. And <laughs> okay, it's time for me to end. <laughs> so I mean, like, you know, who's, I think, I don't know. I think she's known as a, a bread, bread whore or whatever. That's her blog. blog so, okay. Um, become a resource. Sometimes we do need you. You know, we can always call Wuhan. We can always call Hakim. We can always call... Where is that? Okay, where is he? There he is. Um, you know, so uh, we, you know, there, it's for information. Who? Not him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he always tweets. It's so nice to know. Okay. Uh, provide some session because I'll be prepared again. We, we do appreciate the, the contacts that we have, you know. Um, sometimes you also know people that can reconnect that, and it's great, you know. Um, position it in, and this is an opportunity to position yourself as an expert or authority, right? Because they just come on so often and they're so willing to speak, and we, we love that, right? Um, so we will come to you first for information, subject matter, stand up in other places, and feel we'll make regular contact. And, and I think like, with a lot of large organizations, that's the problem. They're so you know, stiff upper lip and they can't talk so freely. So it's a bit tough. So you've got an advantage. You really have an advantage to stand up there um, when you're a lot more you know, willing to speak and all that. But be prepared. You know, don't, be, don't be so terrified. But be, if you know your stuff, you know, you be prepared to speak about that. And this is, this is the time right now. I mean, okay, final thoughts. Uh, Mila's job is not to make you look good. Okay? Always be early. Pet peeve? <laughs> Another pet peeve. Okay, because it gives me a heart attack, okay? Uh, you don't own the media largely because you do not pay for it, but also don't ask when the interview is coming out, demand how, okay, demand how the interview is edited or the questions that will be asked. I think when you don't ask, we will actually be helpful, but when you make a point to tell us what to do, we'll make it even tougher for you. Okay, <laughs> that's why I joined the side. Okay, do not, okay. Yeah, we don't we don't have that. We don't really have a lot of that, right? Um, be an info provider, not an info person. Always tell the truth. And I was just sharing how. Um, again, uh, I think you've heard this before. Don't say no comments. No fishy. Don't ask for questions in advance. That's another one. We can tell you the angle that we're going for, you know. But again, you know, don't ask for questions in advance. You can suggest questions, okay? Although, if we have requested for an interview. Maybe it's kind of fair, you know, if you've asked for the interview, you know, but if we have asked for the interview, they say, okay, this is the angle we're going for. If I wanted an interview with Nelson Mandela and Nelson Mandela said, give me the questions, I will give the questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> if it's Nelson Mandela or something like um, Okay, and you have, when it comes to PR, you have no control. If you want control, it's called an advertisement, yeah? Um, okay, people like neutrality, and I think that's what people appreciate us about. Um, and so no one likes to be sold to. Okay? <sighs> Create a media list, follow journalists, be current, don't forget bloggers, use YouTube, show up your media clips, you know, these are some uh, for, for, for people who don't know. I was just sharing this idea about if you have an F&B restaurant and there are so many ways you can actually get out there every month on a different angle, you know, you've got your Flavors magazine, there's the Star Lifestyle. I'm just thinking if you're out every day, you know, we have the Om Nom show on BFM where we talk to a restaurant, you know, Malay, if you, Malaysian Women's Weekly, if you're a woman, then you sort of come in from that positioning as a woman. There's Kaluaga, there's New you know, there's Rule of Fractures, I've given an example. Uh, we have uh, on Tuesday in my show, we have Open for Business, and it's, uh, we have an a la carte Tuesday, we talk about, so there's so many, and if you're an up and coming uh, SME magazine, you know, Malaysia SME magazine, Time Out, uh, Half I you know, there's, uh, 
uh, there's this new TV, whatever, you know, uh, Malaysian most wanted, all kinds of ways where it could just be that one restaurant, right? But there's so many ways of looking at it, who you're reaching out to, and you, you know, there's not just that one angle and that one media, but, you know, there are many ways to go about this. So this is it, basically. That's it. All right, so we'll leave the... It's so weird to see Frida talk because usually it's like in the morning you hear her voice and then suddenly you see her. Uh, that was useful? Yes? No? Yes? No? Give a round.